All right. Hi, everyone. This is Elisa with XYZ Wellness, and I'm really happy to be here to share another yoga practice with you today. And remember, if you have any questions um, or if you want to learn more about um, yoga or any of the other services, I'm also a health coach. You can visit my website at xyzenwellness.com, and I'd love to hear from you. Um, and again, it, it could be about a question or it could be about, um, you know, some of my other yoga offerings that I have, and I do um, have a bunch of other yoga classes on YouTube, so I hope you check them out. But um, without any further ado, we'll get started for today. So we're going to start standing, and actually if we were seated, we could do this as well. But if you would like to join me standing, um, you can be at the top of your mat. I'm going to be in the middle so that I can face you, and we'll just roll our shoulders back and down. So giving them one or two rolls, noticing any tension or tightness that we might be carrying in the upper back and the neck. And then we can be rolling in the other direction just to give ourselves a little bit of equal movement in both ranges of motion. And then coming into our stance, we might look down at our feet, making sure that both feet are facing the front and all 10 toes are facing the same direction. So sometimes we might stand with one foot out or in, but as best as we can, having our feet parallel and about hip distance apart, and then softening the knees. So we'll roll those shoulders back and down once again, and maybe even closing the eyes or letting them soften down towards the ground. Taking a few moments here to arrive in your body. So just noticing what it feels like to be in your body right in this moment. And if you're standing like me, you might notice a little sway. Maybe you're placing more weight on one side of the body or the other. And we can actually explore that a little bit. So maybe a little gentle sway from one side to the other. <clears throat> Noticing when we go out of balance. And then when we find that point, that place where we are in balance, right between both sides. <clears throat> so maybe that gentle little sway and we can let it slow down a little bit. And then we can explore that same type of motion front to back. So maybe coming forward, letting the heels lift a little bit and then backwards, the toes might lift a little bit. And as we go forward and back, you might notice that you find that place where you're <clears throat> almost ready to tip over, but not letting ourselves tip over. We're just exploring this really slowly. And then from that exploration, finding that place where we feel balanced from side to side and front to back. And feeling the earth underneath us. Imagining that we have some roots growing all the way down into the center of the earth. And they're traveling in all different directions. And from those roots, those deep roots that we created, we can draw some energy and some nourishment from the earth all the way up into our bodies, through the bottoms of the feet, through our firm thighs. So feeling those thighs engage as we lift and engage through the pelvic floor, creating what we call root lock or mula bandha. And then from that lift, still having that energy, drawing up the front of the body, helping us maybe feel a tiny bit taller. And allowing that energy to come all the way up to the crown of the head. And you might even picture that energy as having a color or a light. You can see that light pulsating through the body, sending some energy. Now with our awareness still on that firm foundation, that strength that we're creating in this powerful pose, we can begin to notice the breath. So in yoga, we like to breathe in and out through the nose. So inhaling through the nostrils and then exhaling through the nose as well. And we do that because when we breathe in and out through the nose, it's really soothing to the nervous system. So noticing as we allow that breath to maybe lengthen or deepen a little bit, noticing where you're aware of the breath. 
inhaling to create a sense of expansion for the body and the mind, expansion into the heart as well. And then exhaling, letting go, letting go of anything that no longer serves us. Letting go of expectations and judgments, letting go of competition with ourselves or anybody else. Letting go of those limiting beliefs that hold us back. So we all have those thoughts, those words that we say to ourselves and maybe offering ourselves a kind word today instead. So as we're standing here in this very strong and powerful pose, you might say to yourself, I am strong or I am powerful. And even as we hold this sense of strength and power, still having a sense of relaxation. So you might choose to say, I am relaxed and at ease. So maybe picking one of those to repeat again to yourself three times, or maybe there's another phrase, another I am that's speaking to you in this moment. And as you're saying that to yourself, maybe you can see that color, that light pulsating with your words all throughout the body, sending that manifestation, that affirmation to every bone, every muscle, every organ and cell of the body. So from here, we'll bow the chin towards our chest, letting the back of the neck lengthen. And then allowing the eyes to flutter open with our gaze still down towards the ground. And then whenever you're ready, raising the chin parallel to the floor. And we're going to start to move with our breath. So taking a big inhale, sweeping the arms out and maybe overhead if that feels okay to the shoulder. And then exhaling, arms come back down. Inhaling to lift up and then exhaling to bring the hands back to the heart. So we're still keeping that strong foundation with our feet rooting down through the feet, rooting down to rise tall. And I'm sweeping my arms wide, but if you'd like to change this movement in any way, feeling free to do so. So maybe even on this exhale, as we bring hands down, we might bring them down to the center. Inhaling to expand, exhaling to lower. So changing this in any way, maybe making the arms smaller or even looking a little different. And then on this next one, we're going to turn this into a twist. So inhaling, lengthening. As we exhale, we'll twist over to the right side, arms reaching in opposite directions. Inhaling forward and then twisting over to the left side. So hips stay facing the front and make that turn start at the belly and then the chest and then the head and neck can follow only if that feels comfortable. So it's not about leading with the head or turning from the head and neck. It's from creating that twist all the way down at the belly button. Nourishing the spine and our internal organs. We'll do this one more time to each direction. And then coming back to face the front, we'll bring our arms down next to the body and we'll give the shoulders a couple more circles. So inhaling up and exhaling back and down. So it's almost like we're giving ourselves a little bit of a massage. We'll go in the opposite direction. So anytime we circle a part of the body, so it might be ankles or hips, you always want to go in both directions. So then maybe shaking out the arms a little bit. And we're going to start to flow through chair. So again, we always want to start with our feet about hip distance apart. That's going to give us a nice, firm and stable base. We'll inhale, arms can sweep up and then exhaling, sitting back into our chair flowing with your breath. So as quickly or as slowly as matches your breath. So you might be moving at a different pace than me, and that's okay. You might even choose to experiment with your arms a little bit. So 
You can bring hands to heart center or to the thighs. Arms can be extended. And if we're extending the arms, just keeping the elbows nice and soft, and that's going to protect the shoulders. When we shorten that lever of our arms, you might be getting to warm up a little bit and maybe feeling this into your glutes or your thighs. So we set our weight back towards our heels. We'll do this last one here. And then if you're facing the front of your mat, I invite you to stand facing the long side like I am. And we'll take a big wide stance. So we just did a chair motion where we were sitting back with both legs evenly. And now we're going to go from one side to the other. So inhaling at center to start. As we exhale, we'll come over towards the left side. Our butt is still sitting back on an imaginary chair and we have less weight in this extended leg. Then rooting down through this bent, the foot of the bent knee, we'll inhale up and then exhaling over to that other side. So we're really strengthening this side and getting a little bit of a stretch on this other side. Belly's drawing in so we're not collapsing and then inhaling up. So we'll turn this into a flowing motion just like we did with chair. Arms can be anything that you want them to be right here. So you might flow them a little bit or take them overhead. Or if that's confusing, maybe keeping hands on the thigh. But inhaling and then exhaling to sit into that single-legged chair. So it's almost like a one-legged squat. And being really careful that the knee stays over the foot. If the knee is in front of the foot, then we can adjust our feet in any way. And remember, we're sitting back and down. If this becomes a little too intense, we can always return to our chair pose or we can flow with our breath. The way we were starting with sweeping the arms overhead. We'll do just one more time to each side or until you feel balanced between both sides of the body. Then we'll take a big step. We'll come back to the top of our mats. So we're facing this short edge of the mat, feet are hip distance apart. We'll roll those shoulders back and down. So finding our mountain pose once again. Inhaling, arms into the sky. As we exhale, hinging at the hips, big swan dive into forward fold. We'll keep the knees very bent here to start. So not needing to lock the knees out. And in fact, always wanting to keep at least a little bit of a bend in the knees. We'll shake down our head and neck. Shaking our heads no, saying no to those limiting thoughts that try to hold us back. And then nodding our heads yes, saying yes, I am enough just as I am right now. From here, we're going to soften the knees and inhale, reverse swan dive. Exhaling forward fold, drawing that belly in, keeping knees soft, and belly button still drawing up towards the ceiling. Bending those knees, we'll inhale, reverse swan dive, and we're just gonna do that one more time. So exhaling, swan dive, crown of the head draws towards the earth, and then inhaling to lift. This last time we'll exhale, forward fold, hands come to frame the feet, and we'll come down onto hands and knees. Placing hands directly underneath our shoulders, spreading those fingers wide, and middle fingers are pointing towards the top of the mat. Knees are hip bone distance apart. So for this um, option, if we'd like to, we could add any extra cushioning we might need for the knees, maybe rolling up our mat. We could do fists for wrists if we have any wrist issues. And starting to flow through cat and cow, we're gonna start with a big exhale. So exhaling, emptying out the belly, drawing navel in towards the spine reach in towards the chest for cat pose. And notice the in this position, we're pushing the floor away from us. Inhaling, we'll lift the tail, letting that belly relax down towards the floor, and we'll look forward, cow pose. Shoulders are drawing in towards the spine. Exhaling, rounding, looking at the belly button. Inhaling forward. So again, moving with your breath here, moving 
at whatever rate matches your breath. So for the full inhale, allowing the body to extend into cow pose, and the full exhale, we're rounding, lifting the spine, coming into cat pose. Now we're massaging out the entire length of the back. So especially if you have any tightness in any part of the back, it could be low back, middle back, the shoulders, this might feel really good. So just exploring this here. And I know lots of people tell me this is their favorite pose in yoga, the favorite combination. We'll do one more round. And then coming into a neutral spine. So that middle ground between cat and cow. So we want to have a little bit of firmness and contraction in the belly. So the belly's not dropping. We've got that length. We're going to come into spinal balance. So first we'll extend our left leg with the foot. Plus toes are pointing down towards the ground. And then maybe extending that right arm. If we're extending that right arm, we'll let the thumb reach up towards the ceiling. We'll spread those fingers wide. So fingers and toes are spreading wide. We're reaching in opposite directions. And then we'll exhale, finding that starting point. Inhaling, extending the right leg. So keeping that neutral spine. So imagining we could have a glass of water on the low back. Maybe extending that left arm now as well. Reaching, feeling like you're being pulled. You're getting a little bit longer, more space between the vertebrae. And then exhaling down. We'll begin to switch sides here a few more times at your own pace. If at any point this becomes a little too much, you could extend just the arm or the leg or maybe revisit cat and cow. <clears throat> so this is a great strengthener for really a lot of the body. We're strengthening the lower back, the entire spine, the abdominals, if we're paying attention to those. We're strengthening our glutes and our hamstrings. So especially if you have any lower back pain, this is a great, great move for that. And it's often recommended for back pain because sometimes when we have pain, it means that we really need to strengthen that part of the body. Do just one more time to each side. And then coming through our tabletop, we'll bring big toes together and then sit up its back in the child's pose. Knees can be spread so that they're closer towards the edges of the mat, making more room for the body. Observing the sensations in the lower back. Maybe aware of our hips or our pelvis. Or you might have another part of the body talking to you right here. It might be ankles or shoulders. From here, we're going to walk both hands off the left side of the mat, pulling those fingertips forward, creating some space all along the right side of the body. Inhaling as we walk hands across center. And then reaching those left fingertips forward, feeling a nice stretch, creating more space. Where can we create some more space? Inhale, we'll come back to center. And then if knees are wide, we'll bring them back into an alignment with the hips. We're going to start with our basic um, vinyasa flow. So we'll inhale forward, coming to kneeling plank or maybe tabletop, and then exhaling back. Inhaling forward, and then exhaling back. Every time we come forward, keeping that strength and integrity in the core, so we're still drawing into the belly. We're pushing the floor away from us. So really thinking about that strength we're creating here in the upper body just by pushing the floor away. And then only if we'd like to, this next time we could add in our chaturanga push-up. Exhaling either halfway or all the way. And then inhaling back up. 
So I'll do just two like that. And again, the push up is optional. But this flow that we're creating, anytime we have an option for vinyasa in this practice or any other practice, this is definitely one option that we've got. We'll come back into child's pose and maybe choosing to stay here, or we can tuck the toes under to lift into downward facing dog. Keeping both knees bent at first, so we can find that length in the spine, pushing the floor away from us. Once again, so we're rooting down through that place between the thumb and the index finger. Hips are lifting up and heels are reaching for the floor, even if they don't make it there. And then we can start to walk our dog, bending one knee so that the other heel can reach for the ground and then switching from one side to the other. Waking up the backs of the legs and the bottoms of the feet. From here, we're going to let both heels come towards the ground. Again, they don't need to make it all the way there. Just that action of pushing the heels down is going to help open the backs of the legs. Drawing into the belly, we're going to inhale forward to plank on the toes. So right here, you might want to lower the knees down to the ground where you just were, or you can stay on toes, making a strong straight line with the entire length of the body. So thinking of being like a plank of wood. From here, we're going to exhale, downward facing dog. We'll inhale forward. Again, option to lower knees. And then exhale, down dog, child's pose. One last time, inhaling forward to plank. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Lowering the knees down to the ground. We'll uncurl the toes, sinking our hips and coming into another child's pose, but this time bringing hands back with the feet, allowing the wrists to get a little release, a little bit of a rest. So you might even circle the wrists. Yeah. Sometimes holding onto the wrists can feel good. Finding what feels good to you as we take a break, checking in with the breath. Listening to the body, always asking the body, what do I need in this moment? And being very present in this moment. And walking those hands forward, we'll lift into downward facing dog. Inhale, engaging that belly, drawing up through the pelvic floor, finding that root lock, that mula bandha. We'll exhale, taking a walk to the top of our mat, slower fold. <clears throat> Inhale and we'll take a reverse swan dive. Exhale and bring hands together at heart center. So we're going to start going through some modified sun salutations and we're going to break them down a little bit. So we're not going to rush through them, but find your own perfect rhythm here. <clears throat> Inhaling, sweeping up. Exhaling, forward fold, swan dive. Crown of the head reaches down towards the ground. And then inhale and halfway, monkey pose. Hands can come to shins or to our blocks as we lengthen the spine. Exhale and forward fold. And then stepping the left foot back, you lower the knee down to the ground, coming into a little lunge. Starting off with good alignment here. So you want to make sure knee and ankle are in alignment. Hands can stay on the ground or on our blocks, or we can lift into our lunge. Maybe bring your hands together at the heart or any other option with the arms. So arms could be lifted or you could be taking a chest expansion like I am. Relaxing the throat and the jaw. And then as we exhale, hands come back down. We'll frame that front foot and we'll step it back by the child's pose where we can flow through our vinyasa. So inhaling forward, Exhaling all the way down. This time we're going to stay in that down position and we'll add in a cobra pose. So drawing shoulders and elbows down towards the feet. We'll inhale, lifting halfway into baby cobra pose. So not pushing with the hands, it's all about the back. Doing that work so the back is staying strong here. Exhaling forehead down to the ground. Hands plant into the earth. 
and we'll inhale up, exhale back into child's pose. On our in breath, we'll step that left foot back to the front of the mat, or now it's in the front. So we've got the left knee over the ankle. Staying low, or we can lift as we choose an arm option on this side. I'm letting go of any need to look the same on both sides. We might choose a different option. Relaxing the throat, relaxing the shoulders. And then as we exhale, hands come down to frame that front foot. We'll tuck the rear toes under, lifting the back knee, and then stepping to the top of the mat, forward fold. We'll inhale from the halfway, monkey pose, and then exhaling, forward fold. Inhaling as we lift. Exhaling, we'll sit our hips back and down into chair. So we'll do that on the other side. Inhaling, lifting. Exhaling, swan dive. Forward fold. Crown of the head reaches down towards the earth as the belly draws in. And then keeping that engagement in the core, we'll inhale halfway. Monkey pose, flat back. Exhaling, hands come down to the ground and we'll step. The right foot back, lowering the knee down to the ground, coming into that low lunge once again. We can inhale up, exhaling, hands come to the heart. So on this side, we have an option for a twist, and we'll twist in both directions. So first, inhaling, lengthening, crown the head towards the sky. And then as we exhale, taking an open twist, twisting away from that front leg. So we might Turn our chin to look over that back shoulder, or we can look forward, maybe exploring how both of those feel for the neck. And twists can be a little challenging sometimes, sometimes challenging to our balance, or we might notice a little difficulty in the breath, so we can always come out of the pose a little bit, out of the twist, revisit it. And we'll all inhale, coming back to face the front. Exhaling to stay, and then we'll take that twist to the other side. So again, maybe inhaling to lengthen, thinking about getting taller, and then exhaling, twisting over to face that front leg. So hands can come to both thighs. Then it could be a prayer position. We'll stay here for just a couple more breaths. And then inhaling, we'll come back to face the front, stepping that left foot back, and we'll shift our hips back into child's pose. So you might stay here, or we can add in that vinyasa. So either the one we did to start, or inhaling forward, exhaling to lower all the way, inhaling baby cobra pose, drawing the elbows and shoulders back towards the feet, playing our face, softening towards the earth, so back of the neck is long. And then exhaling, coming all the way back down. We'll inhale, lifting up. Exhaling, finding that child's pose. On our next in breath, we'll step the right foot to the top of the mat. We'll inhale to lift. And again, options to twist here. So we wanna twist both sides. Inhaling, lengthening, getting taller, creating that space. Exhale, we'll twist. Over to that left side. So now we're finding our open twist here. Turning your gaze in any direction that feels good to the neck. One more breath here. We'll inhale forward and exhale to stay. Once again, we'll inhale, lengthening, getting taller. And then as we exhale, we'll twist towards the front leg now. So now we're in our closed twist. Breathing, remembering if the breath gets labored, we can back out of our twist a little bit. We can always revisit it. Hands can be up there. If that foot feels more comfortable, we don't want to tug or strain anything in our twist. And then we'll inhale back to face the front. Hands come down to the floor. We'll tuck the back toes under, stepping into forward fold. Inhale, lengthening. So maybe just a little more space as we lengthen. 
Exhaling, forward fold. Inhale to sweep up. And then exhaling, finding chair pose. So as we move on, adding and maybe changing any poses if we need to. So if it felt good with our knees on the ground for some of those lunges, maybe choosing that. So we'll inhale, arms come up to the sky. Exhaling, swan dive, forward fold. Inhaling the heart forward, looking forward, monkey pose. As we exhale, hands come down and we'll step that left foot back. So option to lower that back knee or keep it lifted. We might even wanna have our blocks here. So blocks can be helpful if we'd like to bring the floor a little bit closer to us. And we'll send that left heel towards the back wall. So pushing energetically. You might bring hands up to that front thigh, coming into crescent lunge. And then hands could come to prayer or they can be lifted or any of our other options. Inhaling, getting taller. And then as we exhale, hands come to blocks or to the floor. And we'll step that right foot back, coming into down dog or child's pose. Then from here, we can stay still or we can add in any of our options for vinyasa. We can come forward on plank, on toes. And then exhaling, lowering the body as one unit, uncurling the toes, and then inhaling, finding that baby cobra pose. Exhaling, forehead down, and then we'll push through to downward facing dog or child's pose. On the next in breath, setting that left foot to the top of the mat. Placing hands on our blocks if that's appropriate as we extend through the spine. And then maybe walk our hands up that front leg. Remember, we can hug our inner thighs energetically towards each other to create more balance and stability here. Inhaling, lifting, relaxing those shoulders away from the ears. And then exhaling, hands come down. And we'll step all the way to the top of our mats into that forward fold. Inhaling and lengthening, keeping our gaze down so that this head is in line with the spine. Exhaling, melting. Inhaling, sweep into the sky, extended mountain, and exhaling to sit into chair pose. So we'll do that all on one more side, one more time. Exhaling. Melting forward, fold. Inhaling, length. So we're creating length in the back of the legs, length for the spine. Exhaling, hands come down. And then this time, stepping that right foot back with the knee lifted or on the ground. And then only if it's appropriate, coming up into that high lunge. So from here, Choosing an arm option, relaxing our gaze. Exhaling, hands come down. And either keeping hands on our blocks or we can bring our hands to the ground as we step back into down dog or child's pose. Staying still or adding in your vinyasa. So maybe forward to plank on toes or on knees. And then exhaling everything down to the ground using strength of the upper body. Uncurling the toes. We'll inhale. Shoulders down away from the ears still in our baby cobra. Exhaling, forehead down. Inhaling as we push through either the child's pose or downward facing dog. Inhaling as we step. That right foot back to the top of the mat. Keeping hands low, or we can lift into that crescent lunge. So again, you might choose to do something different with the arms here. Setting your gaze, your drishti. And then exhaling, hands come down to bring that front foot. 
Stepping forward into that forward fold. Inhaling halfway. Exhaling, melting forward fold. Engage into that core, rooting down, we rise tall as we inhale. And then exhaling into chair pose. Inhale, one more time as we sweep up. And then exhaling, arms come down alongside the body. Bring hands together at the heart. We'll step the right foot back, coming into warrior one. So just a, a small step back. Left knee is facing the top of the mat, and right foot's at an angle. And we can inhale those arms so that fingertips face each other. Just grow your shoulders to the top edge of the mat. And that back foot is pushing down. So if the back heel is lifted, we can step that foot in a little bit so we can root that heel into the ground. From here, we'll inhale. Straightening that front leg, keeping a little bit of a micro bend there. We're going to come into pyramid pose. So first, rolling those shoulders back and down. And then one more inhale up. As we exhale, hinging forward. Hands can come to the thigh. They can come to the shin or maybe to our blocks. So key here is the length of the spine, just like when we do monkey pose or flat back. So we're not worried about getting all the way down. We want to think about length. And keeping that front knee soft. So if there's any tightness in the back of that leg into that hamstring, we can bend that knee a little bit more. We'll just notice if that left hip is walking off the mat. And if it is drawing that inner thigh, you just need the right inner thigh. From here, we have a couple options. We could bend that front knee coming back into warrior one. Or if we'd like, Stepping the hands forward, we can lift that back leg coming into a standing split. So your choice, your option, whatever fits best to how you're feeling right in this moment. To come out of this, if we're in the standing split, we're going to bend that front knee, bringing the back foot down. So back into those warrior one legs. Hands can come back to our blocks. And then very slowly walk your hands up that front leg, we'll come into warrior one. Exhaling, hands come down, bringing that front foot, and we'll step back into a down dog, rolling through a vinyasa, or staying still. So you might pedal out your feet here a little more, or you might choose any of those options, maybe even a child's pose. From here, we'll find some stillness, Checking in and taking a walk to the top of our mats. We'll inhale for a swan dive. And we're going to do that on the other side. So I'm just going to flip to the other side of my mat, but you can stay just where you are. So starting in mountain pose, we'll step that left foot back, finding warrior one. So first, finding your strength and your power here. Setting your gaze, relaxing shoulders down away from the ears. And if at any point having the arms lifted is too much on the shoulders, remember you can bring hands together at the heart. And then inhaling, we're going to lengthen that front leg. We'll exhale down, give those shoulders a little roll. And for some of us, we might even need to stay, take a step in with that back foot a little bit. And as we get ready to come into our pyramid pose, big inhale again. And then as we exhale, hinging at the hips, lengthening the spine. So remember, our goal here is to lengthen the spine. Not necessarily worrying about getting down to the floor. There's no bonus points or nothing magical about the floor. Engage through the core, we're lifting and strengthening, keeping that knee bent as much as we need to. And then from here, your options. So you can either walk the hands back up that thigh as you bend the knee deeper to come back into warrior one, or bring the blocks forward. You can have hands on blocks or bring hands to the floor as we lift into a standing split pose. So that back leg lifts as high as feels comfortable. Doesn't have to go all the way up. 
And that standing leg is supporting you. So keeping that knee bent at least a little bit. And then to come out of this, we'll lower that back foot down, walking our hands back onto the blocks, and slowly up that front thigh. Inhale and coming back into warrior one. And then from here, we'll exhale, bring your hands together at heart center. And we're getting ready for a little more balance. So we just did a really challenging balance doing our standing split. And now we're going to do a, a pose called standing pigeon or standing figure four. So you might want to have your blocks nearby. It's always an option, or you can have a chair or the wall. And starting in mountain, finding sense of balance between both sides of the body. We're going to put our weight into that right foot. So remember, anytime we go through balance, there are lots of different stops along the way. So think of it like a bus route, and you can pick whichever stop you want to choose to hang out in. So you could choose to stay right here if this is feeling good. Or you might lift that knee, coming into a high march. I'm just going to adjust a little bit. And then maybe crossing that ankle over the thigh. So here we are in our standing pigeon. Hands can be wherever they feel most comfortable, wherever you feel successful. And you can stay right here. This is a lot of work on one leg. If you want to turn this into a little bit of a stretch for the outer thigh, that left thigh, that hip, we can start to come forward. So that's where the blocks come in. And we might place our hands on our blocks. Or we could, if we had a chair in front of us, we could place our hands on the chair. And we're starting to get a nice little stretch into that hip and thigh area. Keeping that top foot flexed. So the lower we come, the more we might feel that in the stretch. The higher we are, the more this is a balance. So just deciding where you'd like to be in this pose. And then maybe one or two more breaths right here. And then we'll slowly make our way out of it. So you might want to shake those legs out or those arms, adding a little bit of a twist on the spine, so a little bit of counter movement before we try that other side. And remember that twists and well, not just twists, but balances are great for us because not only do we need balance in yoga class, we need balance in life, and then as a bonus, when we're balancing, we can only think of one thing. So if you want to try and balance, you can't think about anything else that's going on in your life. So we'll start out with that right knee bent. The toes are on the ground, but the heel is lifted. Maybe coming to high march or bending the knee, finding that standing figure four. And again, if you want to stay here, choosing to hang out there. Or if you'd like, you can start to bend. So it's almost like chair pose, which we visited several times in the practice. But now we're in kind of that one-legged chair pose. Bending that, that standing knee, coming as low as feels good. And if at any point you choose an option that just doesn't feel good, then finding the one that does. So now we're getting into that other hip and thigh a little more, especially for reaching for the ground. You might notice that one side feels tighter than the other. And then very slowly you can come out of this, setting that foot down. And maybe some circles or shaking the arms and the legs. And then we'll make our way back to the top of our mats. Inhale, and slipping up. And then big exhale, swan dive, forward fold. We'll walk our knees out underneath us. And then maybe just revisiting cat and cow a few times. Noticing what your body might need here. Maybe even adding a little bit of free movement. It could be some hip circles. Make the wag your tail. Remember, anytime we circle, we always want to go in both directions. And 
And then making our way onto our bottoms. We'll extend those legs forward. If we have a block nearby, we can bring it along. If you don't have a block, you can use a sofa cushion, a book or two, anything that you've got. And if you don't have something nearby, don't worry about it. But we'll make our way on to our backs. So we've been doing a lot of work, creating a lot of strength in this practice. And now we're going to take a little bit of time to wind down with the body relax a little bit. So right here, you might stay still with knees to chest, or you could add in circles, getting a massage from the ground. This can feel really good to the lower back. But if it doesn't, if maybe you have any disc issues, you can stay still or you can change the movement. And then bringing our feet down to the ground, knees are bent, to let arms rest next to the body, and we're going to lift into a bridge pose. So again, feet are about hip distance. We'll inhale, feeling the tailbone starting to lift a little bit off of the ground. So just as we create that tilt, we're lifting up, and then very slowly, one vertebra at a time, as we lift into bridge, creating a straight line from knees to shoulders, and then maybe interlacing hands underneath your bottom. We could walk our shoulders underneath, getting a little bit more of a back bend here. If this feels uncomfortable at any point, we can always come back to that knees to chest position. Our final option here is to lift the heels. And then to come out of this, we'll reverse what we just did. So heels can come down. We'll release those hands and then slowly, one vertebra at a time, letting the tailbone come down last. We'll pause here for a moment, letting the spine settle and come back to neutral. And then we can try that one more time. So, any of those options that felt good, but we'll start slowly. So, inhaling, feeling that tailbone lift. And slowly one vertebra at a time. Walking the shoulders under. Maybe lifting the heels. Breathing. Inhaling through the nose and then exhaling. And then coming out of this slowly. Heels come down. Hands come out. And then we lower all the way down, giving those knees a hug, maybe rocking them forward or back. That's a nice way to stretch out the lower back, bring the knees in and then away. And then bringing feet down to the ground, we're going to do a little namaste sit up. So placing hands together at the heart in prayer position, what we call Anjali Mudra. We'll inhale here, and then as we exhale, lifting the chin and chest. So not looking at the knees, looking up at the ceiling, and we're using the strength of the core to hold us here. Hands can stay here in prayer. If your head gets tired, you can bring them behind the ears. You can reach for the knees. And then as we inhale, we'll lower all the way down. We're going to try that just two more times. So any arm position, we'll inhale, and then exhale to the lift. So the fingertips might come to the knees, and we might try to reach all the way from the knees, reaching, reaching, reaching. Again, looking up rather than creating the chin towards the chest, and then inhaling down. So as we get ready to do this last one, thinking about having maybe an apple or a softball between your chin and chest, so rather than bring the chin all the way in, we're just going to keep our gaze up and we want to keep that space. So holding your, your softball there. Inhaling again to start. And then exhaling, lifting, lifting, lifting. Breathing, making sure we're not holding our breath. And then exhaling all the way down. So for what we're about to do, we're going to do a little side to side twist. Um, it's for the spine, but it's also really going to be strengthening for our oblique muscles. Now, if you have a block, you can use one. If you don't, 
you can just use your imagination. So I'll take the block, it could actually be a, a small kid's ball or you know anything that you've got, it could be a book. And we'll bring our knees up to 90 degrees, flexing the feet, arms come out alongside the body. And we're gonna keep that engagement with our block or whatever we have there. And if you don't have something, just using it, your imagination to squeeze those thighs energetically towards each other. We'll inhale at the middle. And then as we exhale, bring the legs over to one side. Still keeping that opposite shoulder on the ground. So when we feel that shoulder about to lift, that's our end point. And then pressing the bottom leg into the block, we'll come back to center. Exhaling over to the other side. And again, maybe pausing there for a second and then using that bottom leg to help us come back up. So whenever we find that end point on one side, we're really strengthening the oblique muscles because they have to engage to hold us there. We'll inhale the center and then exhaling to the opposite side. So we'll do a few more in each direction, moving at your pace. If at any point this becomes uncomfortable, again, you can get rid of your prop or you could just bring knees to chest or explore that namaste for um, crunch that we did. And we're not going for a momentum here. It's all about using the muscles, letting the muscles do the work. So just one more to each side. And then coming back to center, we'll take the block away, set our feet on the ground, and we'll just pause for a moment. You might bring knees to chest in between there if you like that. Now, if we have a block or a pillow, what we're going to do next is kind of um, a variation on that bridge pose that we did. So we'll lift the hips and then placing the block underneath our sacrum, which is the bone at the base of your spine. It's a little triangular bone. And we'll come into a restorative version of bridge pose. So allowing ourselves to be held here. So the first time we went through bridge, that was all about strength. And now this is about restoring. We can choose to stay just as we are, or if you'd like, maybe lifting both feet towards the sky, coming into a supported version of legs up the wall. So as you can guess, you could actually do this pose up against a wall, but if you don't have one, having the block helps to stay stable. You can bend your knees here if you need to, so if you'd like to bend them a little bit. But just enjoying this pose that we're in that is reversing gravity. So we're letting the blood and the lymph reverse their, nor their normal flow. So this is really nourishing for the body to be in this pose. And this is something that you could do maybe every day for a couple minutes or five minutes, maybe up to 20 minutes a day. But if you just have a couple minutes, this is a great way to give yourself a little bit of a rest. We could probably stay here all day, but we'll just stay here for one or two more breaths. And then bending the knees. We'll take our block away and find any last little bit of movement or stillness that you might like. So if you want to add in another twist or you want to come into a happy baby, feet up and bring knees down towards the armpits, holding on anywhere along the legs. So whatever your body needs right now before we go into Shavasana. And then as you're ready, we'll make our way into that final relaxation. So maybe bending the knees and constructive rest, or we can extend the legs so that they're, the feet are wider than the hips, letting the arms rest alongside the body with the palms facing up. And then kind of like we did in bridge pose, maybe walking the shoulders underneath the body a little bit so that we can have a lift in the heart. Allowing 
the entire body and the mind can start to slow down. Remember, this is the most important pose of the practice. This is the time when our bodies absorb and assimilate all of the benefits from the practice. And then your eyes relax into the backs and sockets. And the shoulders sink into the earth. Noticing every part of the body that is resting on the earth and allowing all those parts to soften and deepen into the ground a little bit more. Imagine all the possibilities. Think of all the possibilities for your life, for love, for work, for growth. Think of all the possibilities for adventure, for fun and for service. This day, this week, this month, this year abounds with possibilities. Each task you have to do, each problem you encounter and need to solve abounds with possibilities. Your life abounds with possibilities. For a long time, we only saw some of the possibilities life held. We'd look at a situation and see the possibilities for guilt, victimization, sadness, and despair. We'd tell ourselves there was only one choice or no choice, or that something had to be done in a particular way, the hardest and dreariest way possible. We'd neglect to envision the other options, the choices for joy, for making any event more fun, more pleasant, more enjoyable. You don't need to limit yourself anymore. You've opened your heart. Now open your mind. Look around. See all the possibilities. The universe is teeming with them. It will lead and guide you into abundance if you ask it for help and then allow it to happen. Open to life's abundance. Open to all its possibilities. The more open you become, the more creative you'll be in work, in play, in love, in life. The more creative you are, the more possibilities you will see. Gently inviting movement back into the body, tracing the thumbs over the fingertips, wiggling the toes. And then turning to one side with the knees bent. Using the hands to help lift to a comfortable seat. And then inhale and bring arms overhead with the thumbs to the forehead for good thoughts, to the lips for good words, and to the hearts for good intentions. The divine light in me honors the divine light within you. Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. Have a wonderful day.